Okay, so this is the basic unboxing, although it's already out of the box. Um, I'll, go, I'll go over here and show you the box that it came in. It's this big thing, and uh, I must say it was packaged quite well. It was, um, the whole box was strapped to a pallet, and uh, we've removed that before we even left the store. We got this at Lowe's. Um, it wasn't in stock at Lowe's, we just ordered it on the uh, website. And then it came to Lowe's and we picked it up from Lowe's, but it came strapped to a pallet. We took that off the pallet. And then it was packed in there with all the styrofoam and straps. And, um, uh, in addition to that, it was also um, strapped to this metal frame that is, believe it or not, just for shipping. And is meant to be thrown away, which is crazy. But, you know, very... Clearly very, very well packed, um, going to that kind of extreme, and had this big, giant piece of styrofoam over the top, and there is, okay, there's the top chute, well this, this here is, I think, the breather cover, it can go right over that, and then this is, of course, the top chute, whoops, that um, sends the debris up and out and it's hard plastic, really thick hard plastic and the cover is metal and the inside there you see it's lined with steel um, where the debris is going to be traveling um, they put a big piece of steel all the way down the neck all the way up the neck and here's the big hopper it's two pieces made out of the same really, really thick plastic. And then the big handle there, which is, feels actually solid. So, definitely very thick. And the machine itself, this is how it came out of the box. So this is as far as it's assembled, which is good. And I wanted to uh, get a look inside here before it all gets real dirty to uh, show the way it's constructed. Basically, now this is going to be the large hopper and um, then there's the exit chute and then there's the chipper chute input. And so on the um, flywheel, which is right there, that round piece of metal there has everything attached to it and on the other side of it is going to be the chipper blades and I'll try to remove that chute to show the chipper blades um, but at this point I'm just going to show this is the uh, screen which is as you can see a big cast metal part and the way that works is it has these little impellers down here if I can get a hold of one Yeah, as they swing around, they pass in between these teeth on the rake, the screen, and uh, that's what breaks everything up. And uh, if it's too thick and you can't make it all the way through, that's why these things swivel, and so they'll just kind of uh, go around for another pass and hit it again, kind of like a hammer mill. And um, same thing with those down there on the bottom those teeth, they go about halfway around the circle, maybe about a third away the circle, maybe about, yeah, maybe a third of the way around the circle. Same thing, the teeth, the tines pass um, around there, there's the other, there's the other one down there. And of course these will pass on either side of these teeth here and break up the stuff even more before it can get through there and up and out of the chute. But before they even get to that, they have to go through this blade here. This is about a, well, it looks like it's about a 12 inch blade. Um, sharpened on the other side. And it's a sharpened blade. And um, I forget the size that they say that you can pass through here, but you know, it could handle a half an inch 
Um, so anything below half an inch, maybe even three quarters, could go through this part. And um, anything larger than that, up to three inches, you can send through this part. And um, big fins there are to provide a lot of wind to be able to um, send the, a lot of air through the main tube and up. Since this is a top chute, it's the only one that I saw that had top chute. But it's going to need a lot of wind to send it up and out the chute, and I'm very curious to see how well that works. Now, the engine itself is um, 270cc, which I believe translated to 11.5 horsepower. And, uh, yeah, this chipper is under quite a few. I've seen a lot of them that look exactly the same, but they all seem to have that same name, CH7. And uh, looking at the um, engine family numbers, you know, I, I doubt that Stanley makes their own engines, and I haven't quite exactly pinpointed um, the engine manufacturer on this one. Um, but it's not Briggs or Kohler or Kawasaki. Pretty neat uh, hexagonal valve cover. And um, these are rubber tires, uh, airless tires, which is good. Everybody knows that small tires are hard to keep air in. And it's about a gallon and a half, I think, uh, gas tank. And so what I'm doing here today is I'm going to be putting it together uh, the rest of the way, which is really pretty nominal um, assembly. I don't know if it has oil in it or not, but if it doesn't, we're going to be putting oil in it. And we're going to be putting gas in it, and we'll start it up for the first time. So, let me get to putting this together. Okay, I got it all together. Um, went together real easy. No problem whatsoever. They say to start with this chute. And it's just attached by these four bolts down here at the base. Now, everything didn't line up exactly perfect, but I didn't drill any holes, didn't... Um, uh, gouge anything or what have you. You just kind of move it around the best you can, kind of pry on it a little bit, try to get it lined up as best as you can. Make sure that um, all four bolts are in very loose before you go trying to tighten anything down and that'll help you out quite a bit. And then they say to put on the bottom part of the big main chute which uh, goes on with those two bolts and this one back bolt. And then the top section, you say to start with these two back bolts and then work uh, the uh, front bolts and this whole um, thick piece here slides into a groove, um, which I think I can show, yeah, slides into that groove there and then you bolt that on and uh, on the inside um, then you put on those last two side bolts and these two bottom bolts, which are right there. And uh, that makes it really solid. This, of course, is your handle where you move it around and, uh, you know, allows it to roll around. Now, so, yeah, it's, um... Things didn't line up perfectly, but they're very close. Um, some people might have trouble with that. Some people might have a lot of experience with such a thing, especially big plastic parts kind of bend and warp a little bit. makes it a little tricky to get it together, but if you've done a lot of that kind of thing, it's really no trouble. But you might run into that. Uh, yeah, this thing, curiously, can close all the way. I don't know why you would do that, but... Uh, open it all the way, and I imagine you could also take it off if you wanted it to just kind of shoot up and out and away. 
Now, one of the neat things here is that it came with all the tools you need. Um, it came with that, but I don't know what that's for yet. It came with that Allen screw and it came with these two wrenches and I didn't use any tools of my own. It even came with the, uh, the safety goggles and uh, oil filler tube. Um, so you don't need anything. I actually used these tools to put it together. Uh, next thing, okay, yeah. Now this is the breather cover, and all you have to do is um, put it on with that nylon bolt. Um, didn't show that, but it's common sense. And the next thing it says to do is to fill it up with gas and oil before you start it. And right there is the oil filler. Now that is not a, um, it doesn't have a dipstick. So when they're saying to fill to almost overflowing, they say to have the whole, that means to have the whole chipper on a um, level surface and fill it till it's just starts to, just starts to trickle out right there. And that's um, what they mean by almost overflowing. And, um, and of course, gas is gas. Uh, and you'll probably make a mess doing that, so this is why I'm about to wheel it out into the driveway rather than in the garage. So that's what I'll do next. Actually, I wanted to note that this guard here is really stiff. Um, that, of course, is to protect you from, I mean, if you really want it to, if you really worked at it, you could get your arm down in there into the um, blade, but I don't think that's what that's for. I think it's to prevent things from flying back up at you, um, which I understand it's a nice safety feature, but this door is, it's really stiff. It's going to be really hard to get branches in there. Um, might have to do something about that. Just wanted to make a note about that. Okay, so I got the oil, got it all oiled up. Made a little bit of a mess, but um, got it where it's supposed to be. Got a little bit of gas in there. The next thing you want to do is make sure it's on the on position. And over here, you got your fuel shut off. Make sure that is in the on position there comes to you in the off position, make sure you turn that on. This is your choke, make sure it's in the choke position for your first startup, and then once it starts going, put it to your run position. And that's about it. I'm about to start it for the first time here, and uh, let's see what happens.
Okay, so it acted pretty much like a chipper shredder. It doesn't have its own, you know, uh, flywheel engage or disengage. Um, so it's typical of the way they work. It's uh, hard to pull because you're turning the big heavy flywheel and then it, when you turn it off it takes a long time for it to to um, to coast down to uh, actually being off. But, you know, if that was the first time I started it, it seems to run fine. And so this has been basically the unboxing and setup and the first start and I'll surely uh, post some videos of shredding stuff. We're in Florida, so it'll be a lot of palm tree stuff, the uh, hardest stuff to shred. So, you know, look forward to that. Thanks for watching.